I'm just walking through the gardens at Dartington again, and uh, again I'm struck by how um, complex this environment is really, the natural environment, but I guess the same would apply to built environments as well. You know, where I am now there's all these pink and white petals on the ground, uh, maybe they came from this rhododendron here, I don't know. Uh, there's uh, you know, thousands of trees around me and each one of those trees has got either leaves on it if they're evergreens or their, or their bark is visible in the bark, it's got lichens growing on it, it's incredibly complex. Uh, that's just the visual field that I'm subject to. These, the sounds that I'm hearing, I can hear woodpeckers, I can hear birds, I can hear the wind in the trees. Occasionally I hear the sound of a car going past. I can hear the sound of my own breathing and the sound of my footsteps as I'm walking. Uh, there's all the kind of uh, feeling sense that I have. I can feel the pressure of the ground on my feet as I'm walking. Uh, I can feel the, uh, the slight pulls on the muscles on the back of my legs because I'm walking up a hill slightly. So it's just like so many things happening right now. Such a lot of stuff. But it doesn't feel like that. It feels like it's quite uh, unified. It feels unified in a, percep in a purely, um, yeah, purely a perceptual way, I guess. But I think it, it feels kind of unified. This is an incorrect distinction to make, but I'll just see where I go with it. It feels kind of unified on a kind of, on a level of a of, of, of emotional sense. And by emotional, I'm not talking about it in terms of. Uh, the grand emotions. I'm, I'm using it the way that Damasio and Joseph Ledoux do, and other people use it as uh, a kind of somatic tagging that goes on to, to award a kind of value or a valency to different stimuli, whether it's positive or negative, broadly speaking, whether we should be encouraged or, dis or discouraged by any particular stimuli. Um, Look at that tree over there, it's fantastic, absolutely unbelievable. Anyway, um, why am I talking about that? Oh yeah, I guess I'm talking about this, in, this emotional sense, uh, and the kind of unified nature of it, uh, and how that, just that ongoing sense of a kind of background murmur of emotion, which is so familiar to us that we don't even register it, it's just what it feels like to be awake, or a part of the component of what it feels like to be awake, uh, and which is perhaps absent from some people. If you have afferent damage, um, for whatever reason, then presumably you don't feel quite like that. But either way, uh, I'm, I'm interested in the relationship between that and the more, and some of the grand emotions which do which we do take the trouble to give names to, things like love and hate and rage, and uh, and the rest. And the nearest analogy I'm thinking about right now, it's, a, it's an analogy I've kicked around before actually, which comes from uh, being near football grounds. I used to have a girlfriend who lived just around the corner from Blackburn Rovers football ground, Ewood Park. Um, I never went to football matches myself, well I went once or twice with my mates, but I, didn't, I wasn't generally a football supporter. But from uh, my girlfriend's living room on a Saturday, you could hear the roar of the crowd just down the road, uh, and that, that's, it was a single sound you were hearing, it was a bit like the sound of the leaves and the trees above me here. Now the sound of the leaves in those trees that I'm hearing, that roar, I'm experiencing as a single sound in the same way that I experienced the roar from Ewood Park football uh, ground, as a single sound. But in the case of the leaves, that's all the individual leaves all moving slightly differently. Some of them not moving at all, some of them being blown quite ferociously in the wind. And uh, the sound of Ewood Park football ground, Blackburn Robust, was the sound of individual members of the, of the crowd either roaring or gasping or shouting or doing something. And most of the time, like those trees, it was just a kind of background susurrus, a, a, a kind of general wash of sound. But it also modulated quite distinctly, so sometimes you get this sudden increase of sound, a great roaring sound, an ah sound, and sometimes that would end in, a, in, a, in a, what was clearly a goal, a hooray sound at the end of it, and sometimes it would turn into an ooh sound, a descending ooh sound, 
which is always interesting to hear, indicating in the inmates or something like that. And then, and then sometimes it would uh, kind of self-organise into a chorus when uh, when uh, a football chant would, 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 would emerge from this crowd behaviour. Uh, the analogy that I'm drawing there between that and emotion is my relationship. Yes, I think my relationship as an outsider to the roar of the crowd, as a person sitting in my girlfriend's living room, is kind of um, kind of my relationship to the emotional state of my being on a moment to moment basis. I think you know I'm not having any great emotional impact by the trees around me and the leaves around me. Uh, there's something large and intimidating was to roar through this environment. There was a bear was to come hurtling through these trees. Then the the stimuli from that presumably would cause a hugely organised response, a bit like Blackburn Rovers supporters suddenly singing a song, or or the ooh sound, or the or the ray sound that came out of that in a, a kind of organised fashion. I would suddenly pick up on it, and all my all that general background noise, which is experienced as a unity, but, but it's a unity of difference, would be suddenly experienced as, a, as a, a particular kind of unity that triggers particular kinds of somatic responses, I guess. I'd probably run if it was a bear, or maybe freeze. 